So good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming uh, today to this event as part of Alaska Startup Week. Uh, Alaska Startup Week is a week-long uh, set of events uh, focused around entrepreneurship, innovation, talking about programmings, uh, different groups that have gone through these programmings, um, opportunities to collaborate across this startup network that we, in the ecosystem we have in Alaska. Um, so please stick around at the end. We'll talk about some more of the events that are happening. Um, but before we begin, I'd like to rec recognize the lands, the traditional lands that we are residing upon here in Fairbanks. Uh, we're residing upon the lands of the Denana people of the lower Tanana Valley. And, and for all those in, in Alaska, you're residing on traditional lands and also those, if anybody's calling in from the contiguous 48 um, and the rest of the US, you have traditional lands that you reside on. So we thank them for their past, present and future caretaking. So to, today, um, um, the, the host for the event is Alaska Center Ice, myself, Kevin Hugh, and, and David Parker here from the Alaska Center Ice, and we're based within the University of Alaska Fairbanks, but also have a footprint across the state of Alaska, and we've, um, you can see some businesses represented here that we've supported through our i program, and you'll be hearing from their experiences um, going through this programming and the benefits it's brought them in terms of their business development and some of their value propositions. But we're part of a, um, an innovation hub that looks to support innovators and entrepreneurs, both through training, uh, some funding, um, networking, and, and building your collaborations across Alaska. Um, so if any more um, information that you would like about this, then please get in touch with us through the chat or, or through the email um, afterwards. So today's events um, is learning from some of the uh, innovation core teams that have gone through a customer discovery um, evaluation um, as part of a, um, understanding their value propositions um, and sort of the lessons learned and the feedback they've got by speaking to stakeholders, speaking to end users, potential customers for their solutions, their products, um, whatever they've brought to the table to evaluate and, and, and assess. So um, we have uh, four, uh, five, I should, four businesses represented today. Um, we have Jay Byam from uh, Carter Solutions. We have uh, John Gregory from Professional Growth Systems, uh, Nathan Prisco from Mighty Pipeline, and Brandon Briggs from Arctic Biotech Oath. So what I'd like to do is um, have each of you just give a little bit of an overview um, on your business and sort of what you brought to the table, um, sort of maybe a little bit about some of the lessons learned and where, if you've gone through it um, in a while ago, some of the developments. And then if you're a new uh, participant completing the ICO program, sort of where you're looking to go. And then we've got some uh, discussion questions for us all to go and talk about and and um, anybody that's listening in as an attendee please bring up any questions you have in the Q&A or or the chat and and uh, Kevin who's working with me today I'll make sure that your questions are brought to the floor so um, I have a um, panel of four so I'll start off Nathan looks like he's unmuted so I'll jump and pa pass over to you Nathan maybe to talk about Mighty Pipeline and what benefits you gained and then I'll do and then John you'll be the next person so over to you Nathan. Sure so uh, my startup is Mighty Pipeline and we're focused on uh, leveraging Alaska's existing oil and gas infrastructure to support hydrogen uh, distribution um, and through the i process uh, we learned a lot about uh, you know anything from say uh, the major oil companies with some of their highest priority projects are, as well as how they contract with smaller companies. So actually learning who contracts with the oil companies and, and learning how to actually, uh, you know, engage with, with them on, on that front. Uh, they've, some oil companies have since uh, sent us some uh, oil to test our technology. So we have a fluid technology uh, and uh, really the value proposition is, um, using infrastructure that already exists and actually sort of overcoming a lot of the problems that uh, the Trans-Alaska Pipeline has now that uh, oil production has been declining. So uh, also through customer discovery, we really spoke a lot with uh, various international uh, companies or uh, institutions and found that there's actually a huge interest in Alaska and the resource potential of Alaska because it's really in a in a, a great sort of geographic location and it has an incredible resource potential. So we've, uh, you know, we've through the i process, we've got a lot of local partners who are sort of believers in the mighty vision who are, have been helping push our project along. And um, that's sort of where we are today. Perfect. Great, thank you, Nathan. And we'll come back to some of these 
topics and, and maybe your other panelists have got some questions to ask you uh, relating to that. So then over to you, John, to talk about professional growth systems and, and what you've gained and what you brought to the table for the i program. All right. Um, John Gregoire with Professional Growth Systems. So we're a uh, business consulting firm that's existed in Alaska for over 30 years. Uh, we have pro proprietary processes for organizational development, strategic planning, um, people development, and uh, not very scientific. And so um, we came to i because I stumbled into being a software developer. So I decided to take our proprietary processes and put them into a self-directed software service model. Um, and so once I opened that can of worms and realized I had no idea what I was doing and I was way over my head, uh, I started seeking help and someone pointed me in this direction. Um, and what I went down this pathway for was we have a passion to support small businesses. And right now our services are largely not accessible to small businesses. We're not necessarily affordable. Um, and, and most small business owners just don't have the time or resources to invest in this type of work. And uh, the COVID experience really demonstrated to me how critical small businesses are and, and awakened for me this passion to want to help um, small businesses and make our, our stuff accessible. So the idea of building a software that could be self-directed, well, now we could find an easy way to do this. So um, when we got down the path, though, we found there was an infinite sinkhole of cost and a very difficult challenge identifying where to put the emphasis and energy and, and who it was um, applied to and how to use the software best. And so through the i program, we were able to do some customer um, assessment and get to the bottom of who our best customer is, what size small business really makes a good customer for us and what features and um, products, what features and, and portions of the product are most valuable to that customer so that we weren't wasting time and energy developing features that that had no interest to small business. Um, I'd say that's an introduction of what got us started. Great. Thanks, John. I, I think just listening to Nathan yourself seeing sort of like a new business that started up versus one that's got a, a large um, experience, you still need to do some of that, uh, that evaluation of new products, of new opportunities where you can then say, okay, what's going to be the most beneficial to provide the pains that the customers needed? And therefore, being able to evaluate that ahead of doing the large R&D investment means you can do targeted opportunities. And also, as Nathan points out, it can also bring in those collaborators that you um, can actually then work with moving forwards beyond the end of the the end of the program and, and for you obviously it's customers and people that you're wanting to then be using your services and using your um, programming um, beyond uh, the end of the pro beyond the end of the um, i -Core program so um, i'd like to then bring jay byam from uh, carter solutions on on um, to talk about his business and the experiences that he's gained and, and look where he's looking to go um, because of his involvement in i -Core. so over to you jay Thanks, Peter. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm with Carta Solutions. Um, I guess maybe uh, thinking through how to talk about uh, our involvement with i -Corps, maybe a, a quick little timeline would be helpful. Um, so Carta Solutions was, was started back in 2019 as, as sort of the result of um, software consulting that, that I was doing and seeing a need for a particular kind of software platform that I couldn't find that, that didn't exist. Um, and so a lot of, I guess, what would usually fall into the customer discovery process just came naturally from, you know, previous engagements that I had. So throughout 2020, <clears throat> essentially was involved in designing and pulling a team together to build a product um, and then rolling over into, into uh, 2021 earlier this year, we were essentially uh, finalizing our minimum viable product and realizing uh, it was time to get people to care about it. So that, that's really what brought us into, uh, you know, desiring something like the customer discovery process. Um, so coming into it, we, we had very specific, very clear value propositions um, and realized essentially that our, our value propositions could be more general than we thought. Uh, we had built a, a, a general platform that could use 3D visualizations 
um, for a lot of different use cases, not just restricted within you know, oil and gas or even restricted within heavy industry. Um, and so it really was an exploratory process for us to, to nail down our messaging um, because we were coming from such technical backgrounds that you know, we would get into a conversation and just directly go into, you know, look how cool it is, look, look at the features, um, but, but really be able to connect with the actual customers and talk on their level how it might be used. Um, so we, we had a long way to go, I guess, in, in, in those areas and, and talking through, you know, 20 plus uh, different people in the industries really, really helped us to refine how to connect with them where they're at. Um, I will say as well, it helped us to narrow um, our, our, our vision in terms of which customer segments to go after first you know, because we saw the opportunity or at least got sort of a survey of the opportunity in the different sectors uh, that we interviewed. Um, uh, the, the last thing I wanted to say just in this brief overview too is that connections that we made through the customer discovery process at the beginning of this year led directly to uh, pilot projects that we did over the summer that, that very much helped us uh, when, when raising a round of investment this summer. And we're, we're still even in, in active uh, conversations with some of the connections we made originally through, you know, that, hey, we're doing some market research, could we talk for 20 minutes, kind of ask, um, but that really has rolled over directly into our sales program. So that's been really beneficial for us. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. You, I'm, I'm starting to hear some similar responses, some similar outcomes um, and it's, it's, so it's, it's good to see how, whether you're coming from quite a different uh, industry or different area, uh, what the i program can bring to a business um, and can bring to a, a, a company, um, whether it's something that's um, developing on new product or developing from, from an original idea. So um, finally, but, but, not la but not least, uh, I'd like to talk, bring in Brandon Briggs from RT Biotech Oath to talk about his um, and his team's experiences in i what what they brought to the table and, and where and this is going and what benefits it's brought to them. Yeah, thank you. Um, similar to Jay, I kind of wanted to give a little bit of a, um, a timeline for us as well. Um, you know, I actually started off as, uh, well, I'm an associate professor at the University of Alaska Anchorage, and uh, the work that we started off with was because we noticed there was a national need uh, for rare earth elements. Uh, there's actually no domestic source of these rare earth elements. Uh, and so we needed to have a particular process that can actually extract um, and get those. And what we, and I'm a microbiologist, so we uh, started tackling that uh, particular problem. And uh, as we started developing the technology, we realized that uh, we're gonna need help to be able to get this over into being commercialized. Um, and so that's when uh, we kind of started i -Corps. And uh, going through the process of the customer discovery really kind of start helping us to fine tune where uh, our customers are. Uh, we could either go from one end as to um, uh, getting the rare earths um, uh, from the mines or going to where uh, people are sending us uh, the feed socks and then we're processing those rare earths and sending those out to uh, um, key uh, companies. Um, and going through these customer discoveries, we actually found that it's actually better uh, for us and what we want to be able to grow um, is to work directly with the mines where we can do basically add, do a value added uh, process with the mines uh, where they're already doing uh, one particular process. We can tap into that uh, and split off and then they can have another uh, resource that they can uh, sell off from that. Um, I think uh, going through the i that also helped us uh, make a lot more connections, uh, not only within Alaska, but within um, the lower 48 and uh, other places actually in Norway, uh, that they started sending us their own samples. Um, and so uh, being able to expand on the types of uh, samples and feedstocks that we can actually use. Um, and I think that kind of really helped us uh, fine tune of where we needed to push our technology, um, as well as uh, 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 fine tuning a little more that message of where we wanted to um, direct our the technology towards. Um, I think one thing that we was kind of surprising in our uh, discoveries uh, is that as soon as we started talking about green biotechnology, 
uh, everybody kind of started to perk up a little bit more. Um, uh, and uh, you know, our process, we don't use any type of acids in this process. Uh, and so that was something that um, uh, I think is, we're gonna tackle a little bit more is that um, uh, it really reduces the cost and reliance of acids and, and the environmental conditions that uh, uh, stem from those uh, particular uh, hazardous compounds. Um, and so I, I think uh, ICOR overall really helped us with uh, fine tuning that particular message and um, being able to help push, push where we needed to take that technology even further. Great, thanks, Brandon. And I'd just also like to thank Drew Casson for, for coming in and, and welcoming him also from Professional Growth Systems. So Drew, we've just gone through and everybody's given an overview of the benefits that, that the i program brought to their value proposition. So John did a great job in terms of highlighting what uh, PGS brought to the table and the benefits that it gained. So um, now we've got sort of a group discussion. Um, I've got six sort of questions, topics here, and obviously reminding those attendees, if you've got any direct questions to the panelists, then then um, please bring those up um, and, and we'll make sure that they're raised. But I guess my, my first question, um, and maybe it's the second one on this list, is what pivots did you make that during the program that, um, that you, get, that you um, put in place because of the discussions that, that you had with those um, initial um, stakeholders or, or potential users? Uh, you've, you've sort of touched it in detail, but often the customer discovery process is you get an aha moment or you see a real pain that, that your product, your solution could benefit. What, what pivots, significant pivots, um, did you make? Um, maybe we can see if the, the, there's, um, the people were making similar pivots, but um, this is really just an open question to the, to the five of you. Um, what did you, did, were there any significant pivots you made because of the people you spoke to or you saw some insights into an, an area that you hadn't even thought about going down because of those um, dis discussions? And I'll, as I say, leave that open for anybody to, to, to unmute and chime in. Sure. Uh, so when we had started with our uh, customer discovery process, we were really taking, I guess, sort of a broad view of how hydrogen could work for Alaska's energy system. And uh, initially, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, belief in small and distributed. So we, we met with all the uh, various, um, like, uh, like Golden Valley Electric Authority, uh, AVEC. So all the, uh, the uh, sort of power utility operators throughout Alaska. And what we learned is that their ideal energy solution is something low cost mass market with a lot of consumer support and they are actively opposed to any sort of you know first generation technology uh, at least for uh you know based on experience that they've had in the past so really going through this process and and realizing that wasn't really a viable sort of way to grow a hydrogen business in Alaska that's when we sort of started to prioritize more the uh, oil and gas connections so yeah, sort of you had a thought of how something might play out, but it took talking to the stakeholders for you to go, well, hang on a moment. We if we want to be viable and we want to grow, um, then we may need to align closer to the current mindset or the current approaches to be able to get that first growth step and then potentially um, build them into these new paradigms or these new opportunities. Um, anybody else have some sort of initial big pivot that came because of those connections. John, I saw you slight unmute if you wanted to come in next. Sure, uh, I'd say a couple of pivots that we've made. One, some features that we thought were key for the work um, were I identified as, as of no interest to potential customers. And that allowed us to, to take those off the development queue and reinvest resources to other features. Um, also, the size of client uh, really changed for us where we were targeting um, a certain size business, a certain annual revenue and, and employee size and realized that we were needed to be at a larger business. And so um, we moved the size of the business that we were targeting. And then last, we were really, um, Previously going into this, we were really focused on uh, developing a software that did not, that was completely self-directed. And, and we learned that, that 
the need for the consultant, the person, the relationship with an outside uh, entity that wasn't software was what people really valued. So that we had to develop a software that included a relationship with consultants as well, that if it stood alone, um, our customers lost a lot of interest. So they weren't interested in self-direction. They wanted uh, expertise and experience and facilitation. So um, now crafting it to be something that supports those activities rather than replaces those activities, which is uh, a different direction for us. And Drew, I'm not sure if you wanna share any other pivots that you had thought of, but those were top of my mind. Yeah, I was going to jump in and sort of uh, add to that last one, which is I think that, you know, when John was developing this tool, we're a we're a consulting company and we want to do good at what we do for clients. And so he was really focused on building something that was going to put strategic planning into the client's hands and that that wasn't and that didn't end up being what people were the most excited about and so part of that was sort of no they really they appreciate having somebody else there to you know hold that um but what they were really excited about was the communication tool that there was a lot of existing frustration around the ability to communicate with boards and stakeholders um what it was that they were doing and what their vision was and how they were going to get there and that that ended up being the piece that was really exciting is that yeah yeah it's great that we can sort of have more control over it but we're overworked and overburdened anyways um what we're really excited about is this is going to make the communication easier because we spend a lot of time focused on trying to communicate that and it doesn't seem like we're doing anything we're just talking about what we're doing and so if we had an easy way of communicating what we're doing that would save us a ton of time and energy and i think get help create alignment so just to sort of uh flesh out john's last pivot there um that was the one that seemed like the biggest in my mind great and it's it's, it's interesting it's nice to hear you're saying that like they're getting excited the end user the customer the one that's using it is seeing it as a must-have capability and therefore rather than being oh this is nice to have and as john points out two months down the line, it's just another software button on their computer, or it's another website they go to whenever they feel like it, it becomes something that they're going to and getting access to whether it's a technology like Brandon Nathan's or uh, the sort of PGS and, and J on your computer on the on the visualization, it becomes a must have capability that, that an organization adds to their portfolio of available tools that they can then use on a regular basis and they get excited about using it you want to go and use that tool or you want to go and use that technology because it's something that is giving you benefit as an organization it's not more work to use something new if it's more work to use something new you'll probably not end up using it and i wonder jay um on the from your side as john was talking about those bells and whistles and those extra add-ons that I think from from your side of being in that visualization, if you had a similar type of pivot idea, and then Brandon, maybe I'll come to you on the engineering side. If there was, you spoke a bit about the terminology that you were using that perked up people's ears. Um, but maybe Jay, I'll go to you first on the on the the extra tools that were in your portfolio of of your software system. Sure. Yeah. So absolutely, you're, you're talking about um, you know. So John, you mentioned that you were able to narrow your technical effort essentially based on what those you know customer interviews, I guess, revealed to you what people were excited about or you know not excited about. And we we certainly experienced quite a bit of what we thought everyone would want. You know, um, it, it, yeah, like you say, bells and whistles, right? This is just this is a, an absolute nest you know necessity of a feature. Um, and then we talk to you know 15 people and not a one of them thinks it's important right and so that that does absolutely allow us to narrow our effort um to allow us actually to pull our our uh, mvp completion forward because we just straight up took things out that we were working on um in, in order to get to you know a shippable product uh earlier that that we thought would fill the needs um and, and in terms of pivots i guess just real quickly most of the pivoting that we did um, was away from and then towards customer segments that that we just really had didn't have a, a good understanding of. So originally we thought there would be a much bigger play um, in terms of visualizing for for educational and research purposes. Um, and and we still think there probably is, but but it's a much longer play. It's it's you know we're we're talking about organizations that are a lot more strapped for cash um, and and maybe more grant funded. Um, and so we pivoted away from that, having talked through how much how how that would be a longer process. And then um, 
pivoted into and toward uh, electric cooperatives. Uh, again, something that, that just was not really on our radar, um, feeling that the use cases from oil and gas were, were much stronger and didn't really apply uh, with, with you know, energy uh, companies more broadly and utilities. Uh, but after a few conversations, honestly, those are now some of our strongest uh, connections with, with the highest potential came out of that pivot. Great. Perfect. Thanks, thanks for that, Jay. Any, Brandon, anything you would like to add from your side in terms of some of those initial pivots that um, were, ex were extremely beneficial as you were going through the program? Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned the, the pivot from uh, using the terminology of green biotechnology. Um, you know, we initially came into this thinking that this would be a value added process that adds another line of revenue. Um, and, uh, and we were going to existing mines, but they already have their processes set up uh, and to add in certain things, it's gonna be the additional problems. Um, it's really when they started to pick up is when they were like, well, we can remove the acids that you're already using. Uh, and that there is going to reduce their costs, um, uh, their permitting stages, uh, all of that's gonna help relieve a lot of that problems for them. Uh, and so that's where uh, I think we really started pivoting is, okay, we can, we can do this uh, and, and you can still get another line of um, uh, revenue out of this, but uh, really what you're going to get out of this is something that's uh, sustainable. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, so it's all, it's interesting to see that you've, you've all got some of you in different industries, different sectors, but you're all sort of seeing, um, and, and talking to those stakeholders and, and those potential users early on gives you an idea to say, comp, like you're getting a, you're getting a feedback that tells you, yes, this is a excited part of your value proposition that you're bringing to the table, or it's not exciting them because you're not phrasing it in a way that they can grasp what the concept is, or okay, we think that this will be a really cool add-on, but maybe it's in version 3.0, but not in version 1.0. Um, and maybe they'll see, those users could see it once they've seen and are using the version that is the MVP or is the version that's out there and, and being um, used by your, your customers um, and therefore you're getting some revenue return and can move on to the next aspect of the model canvas, which is revenue versus costs and actually start um, recovering some of the initial costs to get things started. So I guess we've got a few more questions on here and not to, to forget anybody that's online, if you've got any questions you wanna ask our participants of going through the program, because we are uh, kickstarting another cohort and we will be running another group in the spring. So um, please do reach out on the questions if you've got any specific questions today. Um, and also those can be addressed to myself, Kevin and David in terms of the, the center and, and the program. but. I guess what would if you sort of were saying okay if you yourself came to talk to you today and you were listening in as an attendee what would you tell yourself or your organization if you were going on it today like the benefit it brought to you um sort of what would you tell yourselves the day before you started the program now that you've gone through it what would you tell them to say um that um that they can benefit from this program and I know we've sort of briefly talked about it, about all the benefits and the pivots and, and the directions you've gone down, but what in terms of um, going through a training like this and, and a customer discovery process is critical for a business? What is the essential aspects of this that um, a business of, of any size, whether it be one that starts and applies for its business license tomorrow versus um, a program like a company like PGS that has got a, a, a long decadal um, um, programming and, and projects that it's been developed sort of what is the critical benefit that customer discovery process provides to a company of any size anybody got anything to add from what we've said already um, on, around that topic and again open to the floor I'll, I'll jump in and say, I think it was a, a great deal more valuable than we really expected beforehand. Um, that I think we, you know, as you mentioned, have been in business for a few decades, um, felt like, you know, this was a, 
a sort of logical forward step into the future in an industry that we knew well with clients that we knew well. And even in interviewing and talking to a lot of clients that we'd worked with, uh, because of the sort of different frame of reference associated with a customer discovery, with a real emphasis on the discovery, uh, sort of not a uh, a next step forward, but taking a step out of ourselves and saying, in the abstract, what do you think about this concept? Um, we didn't know our market nearly as well as we thought we did. Um, and so it was it was really enlightening. And that taking that step out and not talking just specifically about your product, but talking about you know the focus on their needs and their interests and how the product may or may not interact with those uh, was a really important uh, sort of frame shift uh, from, hey, we're a consultant, we've worked with you before, and now here's this new thing that we're doing. Um, yeah, so I just would recommend it to ourselves and to others really highly. I think that we have committed to uh, engaging in a similar sort of discovery process on an annual or semi-annual basis going forward, uh, just so that we don't, uh, you know, miss out on these benefits. In the I think you're right, and I think that, and, I'll, and then I'll pass over to you, Brandon. I, th I think that's for, for a business that's looking to do an, a new, a, a new add-on, a new um, tool to their portfolio of, of systems, whether it's a, a new piece of equipment on the engineering side, a new um, add-on to a, a software as a service or a, a software package, um, you always think when you see these things come out, you're like, did they talk to anybody about these developments before they brought them out? Because it doesn't, um, I'm not going to name names, but there doesn't seem to be very beneficial. It's not a help on the previous version of that system. Um, and therefore it's like, well, was how much of the cut discovery process went on with the users that have been using that system or that capability for a long time? And therefore, but then a brand new group coming out, it's like, well, let's, let's make sure that as we do step forwards, a business starting from scratch, or a new capability on, a, on, a, on an existing system, it's still the same process of discovering the customer, discovering the industry, discovering the segment. And it could be as broad as a whole industry, or it could be as, as narrow as an individual organization, as you pointed out, Drew, that you've worked with before. Um, it's that same process of like, what do they need? And are we tailoring or are we going in the direction that they're needing so we can continue them as a client or we can add them as a client? And Brandon, I think you had something to add. Uh, I was just going to say um, to fully embrace the process. Um, you know, the I'm, I'm coming from an academic background and, uh, you know, wasn't really ever trained on any of this sort of stuff before. And uh, admittedly, those first interviews were somewhat awkward. Um, we didn't have our value proposition really worked out to the degree that it should have been. Um, but it was going through that process and uh, going through that awkwardness stage that you really start to um, uh, put things together and really start building where you need to be uh, at the end. So um, yeah, I think my uh, embrace that process. Great. Um, Jay or Nathan, anything to add on that that side of it? Yeah, I mean, I guess um, also when I got started, I also was, you know, recently a PhD student. And um, in addition to awkwardness, I was just, uh, I was surprised at maybe part of it was because of COVID and the fact that everyone was working remotely. But I found that people were very interested around the world to, to meet and talk about uh, Alaska development. And I'd, I'd say just really, you know, go for it. And and like, I I ended up getting a lot of uh, customer discovery meetings with with people that I thought were sort of, you know, out of my sphere of, of reach, but I was just able to get in the door more times than not. And so just really picking someone and, and, and finding the most important interview you can do, even if it's a intimidating or important person or, or company, like, you know, like these things, they'll, people are interested in talking if it's a good idea. It's how to phrase that initial introduction. Either it's do the cold email or do use a mentor or an organization or a previous connection to help to help get you in that door, whether you, you as an organization have those connections or if you can find somebody that you can use as a stepping stone uh, to get those. But I think as you as you point out, it's sometimes it's just grab the phone and contact or send a message through one of the, the social media platforms that are 
that, that seem to be growing the number of platforms that we connect with people. Um, Jay, did you have anything to add on that side? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was going to come at it, I guess, from, from a technical angle, um, especially having been in consulting for a while, I, I just sort of assumed that I could, you know, explain to someone who had no background of what I was talking about, you know, and, and get very quickly to the benefits and why everybody needs this. Um, but I would say, I guess, to myself and, and also to anyone coming from a technical background and then moving into more customer facing work, that you are not as good at talking about it as you think you are, I guess, um, and, and just learn so quickly that, you know, talking at a very high technical level about these things is, is useless. Um, and that you have to be able to boil it down um, and refine your messaging depending on who you're talking to. That was a huge uh, sort of, I guess, brick wall, I guess, that, that we hit early on um, where we have these short, you know, very, very brief moments that, that we're getting on people's busy calendars. And it takes me way too long to describe why I want to talk to them. Um, so that, that's something that, that I would have told myself, I guess, and that would have been really helpful to know. Yeah. Great to hear. And I think it also from from Brandon and being in academia like myself, Kevin and David and, and Nathan having just recently graduated is we always like to do these 15 minute high, te high technical presentations, but it's like, no, you need to have like the, the what, where, why, when, who type of presentation, the, the graphic intensive, not the, the text intensive, the sort of why does that person need to continue listening to you? And then if they have the background and they start asking the questions, then you drill into the whys and you go down. But coming back up to that, five slide sort of the description gets you in the door and then if you if you do have find somebody that that has the the background um then maybe you can drill into the details let's say john and drew were he's chatting to you jay and then found out what your background was of, of color solutions then they can drill into some of the the, the, the technical side but, and then Brandon and Nathan both on that could be talking very technically quite quickly but just because of their backgrounds whereas sometimes it needs that high level description if that's not the the, the person that you're talking to doesn't have the same background as, as you. So I've got a couple more questions to bring up before we sort of give everybody a summary of today. Um, how can the statewide ecosystem help you move forwards? How could those listening in and then those watching the recordings and the other organizations here, how could they help you as you look to move forwards as an organization? Are you looking for collaborations? Are you looking for opportunities? Are you wanting to talk to people about how your capabilities might benefit them? How could the community is, and it could be broader of like weekly get togethers, monthly get togethers, some form of a platform where people can communicate and how could the statewide community help you and, and your organization move forward? So, and again, happy to just let anybody unmute and bring up their their thoughts on that um it's always one that interests me is is as as we progress out of these events how can how can the community help us as individuals and as a community in general move forwards and grow the alaska startup ecosystem either through funding through programming through events it looks like jay over to you first yeah, I just, I just wanted to say quickly, uh, it already has for me, right? I mean, it was just such a natural, I guess, progression for us from the i program into G-Beta Anchorage into Launch Alaska. And, and all these programs that honestly, a year ago, I didn't know existed, you know, and and so that it, it just it really has been extremely helpful. And so I would say to anybody else, similarly, if you've only just completed i I would look into G-Beta, I would look at, you know, Upstart Alpha, all these other programs that I only recently learned about. Have We've just got some, you know, you know, uh, in, insanely good connections through that program, that meetings that we simply would not have gotten. Um, and, and so I guess I would ask that that continue, right? I mean, we've gotten so much benefit from the connections and, and the relatively small state that we're in. You know, I'm, I'm one introduction away from absolutely anybody I want to talk to. Um, and that's, that's been extremely, extremely useful. Right. Anybody else got any thoughts about how the community um, could help? I've got some suggestions, but I'd like to see if the panelists um, I've, I've got anything and obviously anybody attending please bring up those thoughts about the how the statewide community can help these businesses and other businesses in Alaska move forwards. Looks like we've got some questions in the panel so um, something from um, highlighting the that the, while uh, the G-Beta does have an Anchorage-based business uh, focus, and that's because the G-Beta program is a national program, but it's an Anchorage-based uh, cohort that the way it's set up, um, who knows, a G-Beta Fairbanks or a G-Beta Alaska might be the next step 
that might be a way to, to grow the G beta collaborations because it is a part of a national uh, generator um, program with lots of uh, connections into other funding opportunities, investors and things like that. And if anybody's got any uh, feedback on on that, then obviously they can uh, chat to Jay. And I know that on the launch Alaska that was mentioned by Jay, that's another program that, that has different focuses. And I know Nathan um, is in that as well. So if anybody wants to talk about uh, launch Alaska, then they, they're welcome. Um, to reach out. Uh, the question from Jim Ney that uh, Drew, thank you for responding on that as well. What do you think based on your experience is the best way to start a conversation based on the customer's point of view? Uh, and then Drew's response, the trick to understand that they're the experts in their interests um, and their needs and not in your or our product. So it's, I think that's a very good response, very good answer that um, it's getting to find out what their interests and their needs are without telling them what your product is, because they're going to give you insight into what are their needs and their interests. And as, Je as Drew was pointing out, what they're excited about. And then after you've had the conversation, you put the phone down or close the Zoom call, and then you go back and say, oh, our product hit four of those likes. How do we hit all 10 of those likes or 10 of those must-haves? And then you say, talk to the next person. So it's, and that's part of the programming in, in iCore is how to help you um, lay that out, how to help you to understand how to approach um, the stakeholder, the user, the person you're connecting with. And either um, our team can, can, can um, provide some of those connections um, or if you've got those um, connections already existing in your team, that obviously you can get those introductions but part of it is all is not only to, to give you this, the support to be able to do this, but also if you're coming at it uh, and you're at the much early, earlier stage to give you some of those understandings of what is value proposition, what is a stakeholder, who is a payer, who is a, um, what is revenue generation, what is, um, what are the challenges and what are the solutions and this business, business model canvas um, that you've heard me briefly mention, that's sort of brought into the initial uh, presentation and sort of meeting with you all as, as you then go through the, the program. Uh, so in terms of the, 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 the last question to have a discussion is, what questions would you ask each other? Based on you, what you've heard, the, the sort of industries they're in, what questions might you ask each other on the, the, your experiences in the ICO program or just in your business and, and how you approach talking to, to users and potential um, um, stakeholders that might want to use your product? Or is a question sort of how are people working on funding? Maybe others calling in might want to ask Jay and Nathan about their Launch Alaska experience or um, those that have got an Anchorage base, may you want to ask um, Jay about G-Beta. Is, is there any question you would have to each other now that you've heard some of the experiences, the industries you're in, um, that, that, would, that you've got the chance during this uh, time together to ask each other. So again, open to, to you all. Um, if, you've got, if you've got a specific question you wanna ask any of those presenters and panelists from the other businesses. I'll, I'll leave it a second. If not, oh, Jay, you look like you're on mute. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I well, I guess I'm just curious to hear the the state of the union. I guess from from these different companies. Maybe start with with uh, I'm I'm curious, John and Drew. Um, you know what what has been the reception of the software that you developed? I, I think it's extremely admirable that that you sh you know shifted away from your very very uh, I guess um, solid you know consulting background into this new strange software world. So I'm I'm wondering how that's how that's worked out for you guys. Yeah, I, 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 so a few things and I just didn't know if it was appropriate if, that I think about. One, we have a really tough entrepreneurial ecosystem here. Um, this is not, a, we're not spilling over with investors. We don't have programs that are churning out software developers. We don't have, uh, we just, we don't have places to go to run into a whole bunch of people that are interested in making stuff happen. And there's, there, you know, there are these small niche communities, but once you get into them, you realize, you know, it's the same 40 or 50 people. And um, 
So I think growing the ecosystem, making it healthier, getting better. So like one of the biggest problems I have is I really need to find software developers that are interested. I need I need an internal engineer to partner with that can provide. I understand my side of the world and the theory and working with the businesses and, and delivering the product. I don't understand anything about writing code and, and engineering software, um, user interface, uh, any of, you know, what do we develop and what do we just API in with somebody else, any of it, right? So um, how do you find partners and people and how do we build an ecosystem that, that allows us to, to become a place where things are happening, where you can start a business, you can, create an idea. Alaskans are extremely resilient people and we survive with ingenuity and there's all kinds of uh, phenomenal ideas happening here all the time, but how do we bring those things to market and how do we, you know, this isn't, this isn't Silicon Valley. It's not Boston. Like there aren't funders everywhere. So that's, so we're, you know, we're in a good space in terms of because we have a business that is that is functioned for 30 years, I'm not the founder of the business. I purchased the business from the two founders who retired. So we have a, a, a that solid piece. But what we don't have is um, we're using the established business to develop the new product. And so at some stage, we have to go to investment and separate the two and have the product be the product of itself and, and continue doing the work that we're passionate about and love doing um, and not have those two things be married. We're, we're not just prototyping the product. We are actually de developing it while it's in use with actual clients. Uh, and our client base is growing um, steadily. We, we're, our retention is 100% over two years so far. So it, it, it you know, what what we're wanting to have happen is happening, uh, but our growth and scale is not this massive amount because we're controlling it. We're we're not just oh, no one can just come and use the software. You have to come in through a, an agreement with us. So uh, we're able to control that growth, and it's not growing beyond our capabilities at this stage. Uh, but we would like to get to a place where it's growing beyond our capabilities so that we're forced to have that massive explosion and and really um, advance the software. So getting away from that stage where we're sort of controlled uh, development, controlled growth to a place where where it becomes its own monster and we're just responding to demand is, you know, that's knowing when that is happening. So anyway, I feel like I'm babbling, but finding people to partner with, um, I joined a Alaska developers group, software development group on Slack, um, but, but still just getting in, we all have our own niches and we have to collaborate together across our disciplines and functionalities if we're making cross-discipline, cross-function products. And so how do we make it easier for us to do that? Um, how do you make it easier for me to meet software developers and, and how do you make uh, you know, it easier for someone to meet uh, um, a mining engineer, you know, anyway. But yeah, I, I'd say that that's where I, we're in a good place, uh, but we're, we're at a slow controlled growth. And if we don't get the partners in Alaska, then we're going to need to find partners outside of Alaska. And I'd like to not, have, I'd like to not do that. I'd like to stay Alaska based. Right, exactly. You know? Well, that's a very interesting comment from, from my side. Um, it's something that within an academic environment, we, we looked at interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, whatever terminology you want to do. And, and here in Fairbanks, we, the university developed something called Ask an Expert or Find an Expert. So it's, it's an online platform where you can go into the university system and you can type in whatever you want based on the keyword. And it brings up those um, personnel across the university system um, with an area and then you can contact them. And I'm wondering if this sort of online ask a entrepreneur or innovator network, you talk about the Alaska Developers Alliance, there's a Slack channel, but sort of the people on there, they all de develop their own ways of describing their skills. And I'm wondering if 
Um, something similar, because as you say, it is a small but vibrant community. You come to these events and it's the same, as you, as you point out, same group. But um, it, knowing what those are, so when you come to an event, you're not going, oh, I, I should chat to Jay afterwards because of his background and his company and his organization. Maybe he knows somebody or as, and, and, and because of the, the two areas or Brandon and Nathan, because you're both coming in sort of on this engineering um, side as well. And it, it may be this some interface that allows us to share our skills and our keywords and our focus areas so if you do need somebody you jump over to that and then you go oh they're in the Alaska Developers Alliance I'll go and chat to them there or oh they're in the this organ and, and it's but it's sort of the giving back to the community to build collaborations and how to do that effectively um, such that as you say John you're you're able to find those in state that you could reach out to to get though to say okay do you have the capacity and do you fit what you're looking for um sort of like an online network of all of those that are willing to be recognized as part of the innovation ecosystem so we're not just going to individual business sites but some sort of higher level um online platform that allows us to find co potential collaborators and then drill down and go and talk to them and contact them um and, and it intrigues me that to, to hear that um Nathan, I see you're unmuted if you've got something to bring up and then we'll uh, start wrapping up today's event. Sure, yeah, no, uh, I mean, I've I've had like, uh, through customer discovery, obviously I've, you know, was able to connect with a lot of engineers in Alaska, but uh, as, you know, many people alluded to, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, finding investors, sometimes it's quite limited compared to other places. Um, and especially with a concept like we have at Mighty Pipeline, where really it's a it's a it's a, it would require essentially like patient capital. And the, so the, the people who would fund something that has like a 10 year development time is, is quite limited. So honestly, at, at a certain point, um, even though working towards the Alaska project, you know, we'll start to see how, you know, we could have strategic partnerships outside of Alaska, say in Alberta, which has a lot of similar interests to Alaska, but more money available for uh, for funding oil and gas projects. Um, uh, so, I mean, I think that definitely that I, I was very impressed by the ecosystem in Alaska and all the different incubators and all the really, you know, unique problems and unique things that are, are coming out in Alaska. But at the same time, you know, it's it might be something of a tortuous path for us and just trying to be aware of you know, how we could, you know, get those first projects and where would be the best location for those. Right, exactly. And I, I think it comes down to, as you highlight, there's quite a few things going on in different areas and different places. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a, a Alaska startups put together a map and a list of all the different opportunities that, that, that covers the ecosystem, whether it's the initial idea phase of, of pitching an idea to a competition, to a accelerator program that goes out and, and does some form of tech deployment and, and starts building projects. And I'm wondering if it's a, it would be good to, to develop something dynamic that's, that highlights the programming that are out there, but also highlights the people. And, and, and for example, if, if you were all involved in that, then you'd have under your keyword, i -Core alum. And therefore, if somebody's looking to go into i -Core and you've got the time, they can, they can contact us, but they can contact you and say, hey, so rather than waiting for a, a webinar like this, they could go, hey, Brandon, you're in a similar field. Do you have five minutes to just help me on understand how the i -Core might, might might fit into my area? And if, if you were willing to bring that forwards or John and Drew in their industry um, willing to, to be on that list, then then that could be a way to, to, to start some of these things and, and build out the connections so um, you can reach out and, and find those partners. Um, so as we're coming up to five minutes to the top of the hour, I would like to thank all of our uh, panelists today, uh, Jay Byam from Carter Solutions, Brandon Briggs from Arctic Biotech Oath, Nathan Prisco, Mighty Pipeline, Drew Casson and John uh, Groir from Professional Growth Systems, um, also my um, centerized team, uh, Kevin Hugh and David Park for calling in. Um, so what's coming next? So Alaska Startup Week, uh, we're in the first uh, morning. Um, I think this is the second or third event of the week. Um, so if you go to the Alaska Startup uh, Dot co uh, website, uh, you'll see a, a list of all of the events you can see here highlighted are the events uh, for the next two days. Uh, those in purple are statewide. So whether you want to sign up, they're either a webinar or a Zoom event or potentially a Google Meet or a Facebook. So you can go in and get those. Um, 
you see on the right here some more of the events that we at Center Ice are hosting or co-hosting. So we've got uh, the winners of some of our university innovation ideas uh, projects um, uh, in a, about an hour or so. And then we'll have the Arctic Innovation Competition uh, leads um, and some of the previous winners coming in to talk about that this afternoon. So those links um, are on uh, the list on the left hand side there and you can sign up and attend those. So we hope to see some of you at um, those events. Uh, but also just wanted to say that this is part of um, a wider um, set of events across Alaska Startup Weeks uh, managed by Techstars. And um, this is um, an event we hold pretty much every November. Uh, and all being well, Kevin has put in the chat the um, feedback form that if you'd like to um, bring uh, your thoughts on today's events and Startup Week as a whole, uh, then please uh, do fill that out. If if uh, you don't get to it before we're done, then just send an email uh, to um, Center Ice um, or the email that you got that highlighted today's event to you um, from this morning or last week. But on, otherwise, on that note, uh, I'd like to ask if the panelists um, or my co-hosts have anything else uh, they'd like to highlight before we wrap up today. Uh, quick shameless plug, I guess, for the Pitch Fest competition. If you're in the Anchorage area, uh, Thursday evening is the Pitch Fest competition. Carta Solution is is one of the one of the finalists. It's at the Willowa Social. So if you can make it out, I think it's going to be fun. Great, thanks, thanks for that, Jay. And um, as I say, if 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 you'd like to learn more about the businesses that have represented today, then it is on the Alaska. Um, Startup Week website. All of the um, presenters have the website for their businesses are on there, so you can go and learn more about them. And their contact information for them as speakers is on there as well. So um, if you're coming from similar industries or just want to reach out to them and find out more about their products and their solutions, then you are um, welcome to do that. Uh, and, they, and they will be able to get in touch with you and, and work out ways to communicate. So I, I just want to say thank you for participating to everybody today. Um, if anybody is interested in the i program, please do reach out. There is a, uh, for those new teams coming in, there is a stipend support for you to be able to go through this and some travel uh, funding support. We can run teams together and we can also run um, part of the programming based on your timing. And if there's an event that you want to go to where you're going to go and talk to potential st stakeholders, um, anybody listening in from the university environment and external, then this is open to you as well. Um, as you can see here, Nathan ran it through Mighty Pipeline. Brandon did it as university and then moved over to Arctic Biotech. And then we had Jay, Drew and John from external we had Fairbanks and Anchorage people so it's it is open to the state um, and we'd be happy to have you go through the programming provide you some support and help you take some of these value propositions out out of the lab into the market and evaluate um, where might be the direction that you can go to have that must have that excited customer as, as, Dre was, as Drew was pointing out that really wants those tools really wants that solution that you're developing so you can have a successful um, business as, as we look to grow and develop the economic um, um, benefits that, it, that this can bring to Alaska and uh, all doing well, you can